John here guys and today we're talking about the Jumper T8SG Lite. This is not the Jumper full size, this is the tiny one. This costs about 40 bucks and uh, it is comically small. This is one of the micro size transformers, I believe that's brawn. Ain't no one calling me a robot chicken! That to my buddy. What you and uh, yeah, it, it, you can't tell on screen, you can't tell from the pictures how big this thing is. When I took it out of the package, I just kind of started laughing. I couldn't believe how tiny it is. Uh, I don't have huge hands, but uh, if that tells you anything, it looks like I have like under the giant hands next to how small this thing is. It runs the deviation software, but it is a multi-protocol radio. That means that it can, out of the box, bind up to FR Sky, uh, Fly Sky, and a variety of other protocols, um, which is really, really cool. It's very, very versatile, but um, here it is next to my QX7S, and it is much, much more portable. Now, you're going to be considerably short on switches. Uh, you can see the software interface there. Go check out Andy RC's video on how to set up these three position switches. That's very useful for when you get to it. Uh, why is this not turning off? There you go. Um, there is some setup involved that's, I wish it ran OpenTX. I believe the new T12 does run OpenTX, but this one doesn't, and that took me by surprise. I kind of thought that it did. Now, getting this set up was a little fiddly. Um, there's plenty of videos that'll teach you how to. The, the trickiest part really is just how to set up your switch. It's a little more tricky than it is setting up a Fry Sky or Free Sky radio for the first time, but it's not too terrible. This is very plasticky feeling. Um, it looks like, it feels like something you'd get like from the Dollar Tree or something like that. Batteries go in here, it takes a couple of double A's, I believe four. These uh, gimbals are brush gimbals. They are not hall sensored by any means. They don't feel spectacular. Uh, here is an Xbox One controller next to it. So it's about the same width, but I, I wanna say you actually get, it's, it's actually about the same amount of stick throw, but this is way smoother on your Xbox One controller. Substantially smoother. It just, I, I don't know if there's tension adjustment in here. There probably is. So you could get that a little bit smoother but the stick throw is so much shorter than what I'm used to. I did a couple of flights with it. It's definitely flyable. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a transmitter that you can get for $40. If you wanna get somebody into the hobby, if you wanna get them a whoop class or something like that, get them up in the air. You want them to have the ability to use, you know, a lot of the toy grade things out in the hobby. You want a second transmitter to kinda of go with you whooping everywhere. That's kind of what I wanted and I envisioned this for myself. But flying it, let me tell you something. If you get one of these and you're used to flying one of these or any full size radio, do not go fly your five inch on this. And that's nothing about the hardware per se. It's just that the difference in stick throw is gonna have your muscle memory way confused. You will crash and if you're flying something that's too fast, you know, you're just gonna crash it almost immediately because you're, you've trained your brain over dozens, countless hundreds of hours to know that if I wanna do a maneuver exactly how far to move my thumb, and you can see the stick travel on this. That same stick travel is substantially uh, shorter. What is this? A center for ants! And it's, so it's not just the fact that it's not smooth. Also, what do you notice about this? Self-centering stick, self-centering stick, self-centering stick. You know, the only self-centering axis that we don't have is our throttle. This does not self-center at all on any axis. And so that is a very unfamiliar feeling when you're flying. Now you can definitely get used to it, but like I said, don't go, you know, flying a super fast quad because it's gonna feel a little foreign to you at first. I would definitely recommend this for whoop class or slower. I flew it a couple test flights on a two and a half inch and it was very disorienting even at that speed on 2S. So at $40, it is less than half of the cost of your baseline QX7. Now this is QX7S, which costs even more. Um, so do I recommend it? Uh, if you just wanna have a backup or you, know, you wanna have something you can get started with, potentially give it away. I do like this better than the one that comes with the Tiny Hawk because the Tiny Hawk, you can't really use it for anything else. This you can use for a variety of models of all sizes. 
I almost feel like maybe you should spring a little bit more for the next jumper up from this. I believe it's a little, it's close to $100. But man, like, I really feel that you're better off just getting a QX7 or even an X Lite. Uh, I don't know if this has a place, but I do appreciate how cheap it is. And I've even seen it on Supercell a couple of times for closer to $30. Um, so at that price, you know, you can try one out, you can give it away. I think I'm gonna get this to somebody else in a kit. It's amazing that they can even have a radio that is this versatile. I mean, this thing can only connect to FR Sky. This thing can actually connect to a variety of protocols. So on that front, it is superior. Now I'm used to using at least three switches. Now you can tell that this has quite a number higher switches than that. This only has two. So that means you're kind of stuck to modes, arm. How do you do turtle mode? How do you turn your beeper on? Uh, so again, that's why I would suggest smaller models where you don't necessarily have to worry about those additional features. But uh, still very cool. It's nice to have an option of this price as an introductory item for people to get into the hobby. I think that most people that do end up with this will tend to probably upgrade pretty quickly after getting it. But, uh, you know, it's nice to have these on the market. So I wish that they would make one that's slightly bigger. And actually they do. And it's not that much more than this. I think I've seen the full-size jumper T8SG for a little bit more. I think the gimbals are gonna have a little bit farther throw and that's gonna be, I'm, I'm guessing they're probably also gonna be self-centering. That's very disorienting uh, when you're flying one of these. I can tell you from back in the day when you had your toy grade radios like the Sima X5, I can't remember if that had self-centering gimbals or not, probably didn't. Um, so that's gonna be the difference. If you're used to one of these, uh, I'd be reluctant to get this. But if you just wanna get started and you want something cheap and you want a radio that can connect to a variety of models out of the box, this might be the answer for you. So there you go, 40 bucks, cheap radio, very tiny. Um, but it's it, it, These images, the videos, they just don't do it justice. Until you see it for yourself, you don't understand just how small this thing is. It's, it's like the size of a sandwich, basically. Uh, so thanks guys.